Hi, I'm Amy Golding and I'm the Director of Psychology at the Mental Health Recovery Institute. In 2012, a review of Victorian suicides between 2000 and 2007 found that in over half the cases there were both work-related and non-work-related factors involved in the suicide. Non-work-related factors are things like a history of anxiety and depression, relationship problems, drug and alcohol abuse and other physical and mental illnesses. This highlights the factors leading to a person to suicide are often complex and multidimensional. But in almost half those cases, work stresses were the sole factor contributing to suicide. So what kind of work stresses may lead a person to take their life? The World Health Organization says that stressful work environments are those with constant time pressures, uncontrollable work schedules, background distractions, strife, or things like poor employee relations, bullying or harassment, lack of space, general uncertainty, and a push to do more with less. That sounds like almost every modern workplace, doesn't it? An earlier study done in 2002 found nine factors that contributed to workplace suicides between 1989 and 2000. 6% were due to being investigated over a work matter. 13% were due to an argument or a disagreement with a work colleague or supervisor. 15% were due to performance pressures or long hours. 17% were due to fear of retrenchment or actual retrenchment. And 21% were due to work stress. When it comes to reducing the risk of workplace suicide, one of the most promising strategies to emerge is gatekeeper training. Gatekeeper training is where you find a group of people who are in a natural position to look out for a large population. These gatekeepers can be trained to spot the individuals at risk and refer them to appropriate supports. So potential gatekeepers can be police, sports officials, teachers, co-workers, shopkeepers, and other people who get to know a community of people really well. Now, as leaders and work colleagues, we're the ideal gatekeepers during the third of our waking hours we spend at work. We can learn to identify the warning signs of suicide so we can reach out to someone at risk before things move past the point of no return. If you'd like to develop your skills in this area, please check out our online suicide prevention course. In it, you'll learn some practical, life-saving skills to identify the warning signs early and to intervene correctly. The course can be completed on any desktop or tablet at a time that's suitable for you. So head to the link on the screen to find out more. Thank you and take care.